Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It is Friday, August the 26th. Potter Blog this is short for Pissing on the Roses, Feral Dogs Out in the Cold, Marking Our Descent One Rose Bush at a Time. Well, unfortunately, there's a serious issue at the moment at the North Anna Nuclear Power Station in regards to uh, safety and whether or not the local residents should evacuate the area. Uh, part of that is tied to uh, current lake levels, uh, steam coming off the facility, and the incoming hurricane. So I wanted to provide some detailed analysis so people understand what's going on with the lake levels, with the uh, steam coming off the facility, and what the good detail and what good uh, decision criteria is to mitigate the risk of this facility and when you should evacuate. Uh, the executive summary is, for those of you who don't want to watch the entire video, is if you're living on Lake Anna, if by Friday evening you look out and you still see large amounts of steam dumping out of that nuclear power plant and the lake water is still decreasing, then I believe it would be in your best interest to evacuate that area. I know if I lived there, I would. So let's go into some detail and know exactly what's uh, occurring and uh, what drew our descent. And really came out of this video we saw on the internet from uh, CBS 6 and you're about to see a very smart young man here who uh, I think has an intuitive grasp of the risk that his family faces and let's listen to what he says and what uh, the North Anna Power Plant's response is and how the response is sort of untruthful in my opinion with the water draining in the lake I'm a little Dominion says each of the plant's two units normally pump one million gallons of water a minute into this part of Lake Anna. Dominion says when the power was disturbed, so was the flow of water into the lake. Dominion says residents have nothing to fear, but the Rantlands say they'd still like more safety measures in place. Very concerning, you know, just... You know, there's the rub. They say the lake levels are dropped because they're not pumping water back into the uh, lake. And, and that, in my mind, is outright deception or misinformation. Uh, here's a Google map of the lake. Here's the power plant. The lake is actually divided into uh, two sections. Again, here's a power plant. There's this side of the lake. This is the cool side of the lake. This is where... Uh, the cooling water for the power plant comes from. This is a man-made lake they created to cool this power station. The flow of the river is not strong enough volumetric wise to cool the power station so they had to create this lake. Over here you'll see these three areas here, these three little berms. These are actually mini dams and what happens is the power plant draws in cool water from the lake here and it discharges it into the hot water side of the lake and that water works its way down through this left side of the lake, the hot water side, until it gets down to this third berm, and then that water is pumped or discharged back over into the cool water side. They say they pump a million gallons a minute through there normally. Now, they make it sound like the reason the lake's dropping is because they're not pumping this water back through. Well, if we believe that to be the case, there's only two really strong reasons why not to pump that water back through. Uh, one is, is that this water is so hot that it would cause thermal damage to the lake. As uh, ancillary point that is, if you increase the cool water temperature, then the, it is a lot harder to cool the uh, power plant when that water recirculates back. The other plausible reason would be is that there's radioactive discharge in this water, and you don't want it crossing back over into the cool water side and dumping down through this ramp, dam and contaminating the rest of the environment. So there explanation is dubious. The real reason this lake water is dropping is is because they're sucking at least, I suspect, a million gallons a minute through there of cold water, cool lake water, through their turbines and they're discharging it as steam directly into the air. So the majority of this lake water is being discharged as steam into the air to cool the plant. Now eventually the plant will cool down enough so that they can go to another method that doesn't require steam. The, the actual decay heat from the plant will be low enough that it won't create steam and they'll be able to use direct water to water heat transfer to uh, remove it, hence there'll be no more steam. 
And that's why the, one of the evacuation criteria is if you still see steam pouring out of this thing, then that means the plant's not cool enough to, to be in a mode safe enough, I believe, to handle what's coming in from this hurricane. So that's one of the uh, decision criteria I have if you live on this lake or if you live in Mineral to get the heck out of here before that hurricane comes is the amount of steam coming in here. So let's go into a little bit of detail um, about the actual nuclear generation facility itself and the steam system. So go back up here. Show, I'll show you the uh, design of the uh, nuclear reactor and its uh, steam generator. This is a three loop Westinghouse system. Basically what happens is each one of these is a, a closed loop down here. This means this water is never supposed to leave and this water down here is highly radioactive and pressurized. And there's three of them. And this water comes up through here to a heat exchanger, which is a lot like your radiator in your car, except uh, they pump water across it to move the, the heat out of it. And they go into the steam generator. This steam generator uh, create, uses, uh, takes the steam out of this, takes the heat out of the system, converts it to steam, sends that steam to the turbines, which generate electricity. Well, apparently the turbines are offline at the moment, so they can't do that. So what they've had to do is, is they're taking, they're taking water directly out of the lake. This is the steam generator over here. They're taking water directly out of the lake, running it through this heat exchanger. And this is nasty lake water, mind you. And they're, they are dumping it directly, the steam into the atmosphere. Now, these steam generators, typically they, uh, they split out the steam into superheated steam which goes to the turbine. That's basically steam that has no liquid content in it because if there's any water droplets that condense on the turbine rotors then that can severely damage the turbine rotors and it's also not as efficient. Now the risk here, and this is normally a closed system, the water that has to go through this heat exchanger and into the turbine is a closed system which means it's clean water. They keep this water as clean as possible so that the goo doesn't build up on the heat exchanger and so it doesn't build up on the turbines. Well, all these steam generators have been shook now by a major earthquake for that region. And so there's some risk of uh, these things not working well, leakage of radioactive materials. And when you pump fresh lake water across this thing, you know, that's not the, uh, the greatest for the survivability of these heat exchangers. So there is some risk here just from massive dumping of lake water for these things. And again, what I think they're trying to do is to cool down this core as low as possible before this hurricane hits. Because if the hurricane hits and takes out power to this station and removes their cooling ability, their electrical backup systems, before this core is cool enough, then there's even a greater increased risk that this core could melt, much as it is in Fukushima. So it's in their best interest to get this core as cool as possible. Now if you look at the fact this is a three a three loop system, they probably have no more than one or two of these loops working at the moment removing heat. Because if they used all three of these guys, it costs more money because of the maintenance to get these things back in action, clean them and inspect them. Now the, the other aspect of here, which in this video earlier, which I haven't, I haven't played this part of it, but the uh, spokesman for the North Anna Lake uh, power plant, nuclear plant, basically says they were ready for this because the plant was designed for a 6.2 earthquake. Well, that's the most spurious logic I think I've ever heard in my life, especially for a 5.9 earthquake. The plant, not all earthquakes are identical. There is no such thing as every 6.2 earthquake or every 5.9 earthquake being identical. This design criteria for the plant was most likely based, and this is my swag is most likely based on a 6.2 earthquake with its epicenter located roughly between 6 and 30 miles underground. This earthquake was uh, approximately a 5.9 and it was less than one mile underground. That means there's a lot more shaking on this earthquake you're going to feel because you don't have 29 miles of ground beneath you dampening out the motion of the earth. So the risk is the risk is that uh, this plant is a lot more damaged than they're letting on and that the hurricane will put it in even greater risk. 
So again, my criteria for leaving that area is you see steam still pumping out and the lake levels are dropping, get out. And my other aspect of advice is, is I sure hope that they've uh, doubled the guards on that place because the hurricane is a major force multiplier for this uh, facility uh, for people with nefarious intent. So thank you and pray that the hurricane only refills this lake and doesn't cut the power. Bye.